Hey, what's happening, guys? What's going on, YouTube? You guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels, and today is episode 102 of Side Hustle Tuesdays. Uh, as I typically do, I write out these episodes, and then there's always some little kind of uh, commentary or something I want to say at the beginning, and it kind of throws off my whole intro. So uh, I'll be rereading an intro here in just a second, but uh, I know a lot of people who watch these Side Hustle Tuesday episodes are looking for business ideas, looking for business opportunities, looking for niches to get into, looking for skills that they can acquire and make money off of. And, and you know, guys, I know most of you guys probably have, have somewhat of a background or basis in digital marketing, but if you can become even a moderately decent digital marketer, there is stupid money to be made out there. I wanted to tell you a little story. So uh, uh, a buddy of mine who's a, a client of mine, he, he's got uh, several Shopify stores, all kind of selling the same products, but basically just different branding. He also has a couple retail stores. And the retail stores, they make a little bit of money more than anything. The reason he started those is because a lot of suppliers won't let you, uh, a lot of different suppliers will only let you sell their stuff online if you also sell it in brick or mortar. So that brick and mortar. So that was kind of the reason for setting up the brick and mortars. And I actually saw another guy uh, on Reddit or Facebook the other day who was thinking about setting up a uh, brick and mortar shop just because it, it, it gets you access to, uh, a lot of brands or distributors or products that uh, that you otherwise couldn't get if you were only online. Um, anyhow, I, I was helping out my buddy today. I, I go in there a couple hours, a uh, couple hours a week, and uh, I kind of know his products and things like that. They're a little bit short staffed, so uh, I was helping some customers while I was in his shop, and he was in the back room or back in the warehouse. And uh, some guy came in, and I, you know, I went up to help him. I didn't know if he wanted to, to check out or ring something up. And uh, he was actually selling digital marketing services. And he said, you know, we, we do SEO and digital marketing and, you know, this, that, and the other. And I, I said, well, you know, I'm actually the uh, the digital marketing guy. And they also have a, an in-house team as well. I said, so, you know, I, th I think they're kind of set. And, of course, he gives the same pitch that, you know, all these agencies or, or, you know, freelancers, whatever, do, which is, oh, we can work side by side with your team. And I think there's a lot that we can do. And, you know, we can take some great, uh, you know, photos uh, of the store. And I said, do you guys do video? Because video is actually one area that that I think they could actually use some help. And it's not really something that I'm very capable of, uh, which you guys can probably tell from how well edited and shot my YouTube videos are. Um, he was like, oh, well, we don't do video. It's something we're thinking about doing. Um, but when I kind of, I, I don't even want to say pressed him, but when I, when I asked him, when I'm like, you know, we're all over, you know, I mean, literally any search term, we'll, we're all over the top three, top five slots on the first page of Google. Like you really can't improve the SEO of this site very much. Um, but he was like, you know, we do SEO stuff. And when I would ask him like, well, what do you mean? Like, what would you do? He didn't really have any answers. And I get it. He's the sales guy. He's not necessarily the SEO, but what he kept pitching me on was, look, it, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> If you guys are having like a company meeting or something, you have a company outing, you guys aren't going to be in the office. What, what we can do, you just text your account manager and he can change the hours. So if you guys aren't going to be in the office on Friday because you're having some company outing or a seminar or conference, like we can change the hours for you so that it reflects that the business isn't open. And I was like, you know, anybody, <laughs> anybody who's ever used a computer before can probably manage to, to get into uh, Google My Business and or Facebook and like change the hours or, or put that, you know, put that we're closed for the day. Like, I don't think I really need to pay somebody to do this. And that was like what he kept pitching me on. And when I asked him what it cost, he said $1,300 a year. And no doubt in my mind that if a company is sending a sales guy around doing this, that he's actually getting some sales. Otherwise, they wouldn't be sending him around. So uh, my, my point here is that I think there's stupid money to be made in uh, in digital marketing if you're even halfway proficient. Uh, so if you're looking to acquire a skill, I mean, it takes no money to learn digital marketing. You can set up your own sites, uh, start messing around with SEO, start running, you know, five bucks a day in, uh, in Facebook ads. Google ads is a little bit harder to do on a low budget, but, you know, start practicing on social media, start practicing with SEO, start trying to grow a blog or a forum or, or some type of community. Um, and then kind of use those skills to offer your services to businesses. And there's a whole lot of money out there. So uh, I just wanted to kind of preface, to preface today's episode of Side Hustle Tuesday with that little antidote. Uh, without further ado, let's hop right into it. So uh, back for the second intro of this video. Hey, YouTube, what's happening, guys? You guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels and another episode of Side Hustle Tuesdays, our weekly side hustling series. If you enjoy these stories, take a minute before we get started, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button down below, and if you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button as well. I'll also link to a playlist of the Side Hustle Tuesday episodes, all 102 of them, if you want to catch up on some. 
uh, or revisit some older episodes for ideas. Today is episode 102. Today's story is about a bank employee from the UK who launched a weight loss and fitness app. Uh, this is a few years back, back in 2012, and still to this day is pulling in about $6,500 a month while he travels the world as a digital nomad. Today's story is especially fitting as I'm currently on a bit of a fitness kick myself. While I've always been pretty active and tried to work out regularly and stay in shape, I was also fortunate that I could pretty much eat garbage and take months away from the gym and still stay in pretty good shape. The past year or two, however, I've been freelancing with a number of you know supplement nutrition companies, uh, and I've been busy, and who would have thought that eating protein snacks and not working out would cause you to gain weight? Uh, I was shocked recently when I stepped on the scale, uh, just kind of randomly after my girlfriend weighed herself, and I noticed I'd put on 30 pounds. So uh, past couple weeks, I've been eating healthy, hitting the gym, lost 10 pounds so far, uh, and I've be, kind of begun to get my more athletic figure back. So today's story is both interesting, fitting, and timely for that reason. Uh, so back around 2008, Apple launched their App Store. Uh, around this time, it was a little gold mine for, for app developers. Not only was there much less competition, but the concept of apps was a completely new and a completely novel thing, and people were downloading anything and everything regardless of how stupid it was. I'm sure some of you guys who uh, had smartphones around that time, I probably didn't get my smartphone until like 2012 or something like that, but I'm sure some of you guys who had smartphones earlier can attest to some of these stupid apps that were out there and maybe even that you had downloaded back in the early days of smartphones. Uh, and I'd love to hear from you guys. If you guys remember any of the silly apps that used to be out or that you even downloaded yourself, go ahead and, and drop a comment down below with some of the goofiest ones you've ever downloaded or you remember seeing. Uh, what's interesting about today's side hustler story, however, is that he didn't get started in 2008 when the App Store launched. He actually didn't get started until 2012. Uh, so there's no saying that, oh, he got in before it was saturated or he got in at the perfect time. Uh, well, 2012 was quite a while ago and, and still somewhat in the early days of apps and smartphones in a sense. He wasn't the earliest by any means. Today's story is about Lewis Smith, a gentleman from the UK who back in 2012 was working for Barclays Bank uh, in England. Lewis was getting married soon. His wedding was quickly approaching and he was looking to get in shape for his fast approaching wedding day. Now, there's no so shortage of fitness apps on the market. Uh, recently, I'm getting bombarded by one with ads called Noom or Zoom that I think is actually quite popular. Uh, anyhow, Lewis started out by going on a low-carb diet, but he wanted to do more than that, and he wanted to track his progress. He also didn't want to focus just on losing weight, as muscle weighs more than fat, and not losing weight doesn't necessarily mean that you're not getting fit uh, or that you're not looking better. So Lewis began looking into other ways to measure his progress, uh, like BMI and body fat percentages. Lewis wanted a way to track this, but he realized there wasn't really anything on the market to do so. Now, Lewis himself was not an app developer and really had no experience developing apps, but he did like building things, he liked figuring things out, and he was somewhat entrepreneurial, and he thought he had a good idea and something that filled a gap in the market, so he decided to learn app development and build an app. Every day after work, Lewis spent hours working on the app and learning uh, app development as he went. Now, this amazes me, people who, who can do this and who can learn a challenging new skill at the same time that they're building their business. Uh, I met a couple guys last year who did this very thing. Uh, their name is slipping my mind. If I can rem remember it later, I'll drop it in the comment section below. Uh, and as I think about this, I should probably actually contact them and get them on the channel at the very least for an interview and to pitch their app um, and possibly for an episode of Side Hustle Tuesdays. Anyhow, they created an app that was very similar to Clarity.fm for any of you guys who are familiar with that. Uh, it was basically a pay per minute phone service that allowed fans to talk to their favorite YouTubers, influencers, online creators, or online celebrities in a pay per minute model, kind of like a 900 number. Uh, however, it differed from Clarity in that people didn't need to schedule a time and have it approved. A creator could make themselves available on the app by toggling a switch and fans could call them right then, no appointment needed. Anyhow, I digress. Uh, Lewis worked on his app. He decided to call it Progress App since it tracked your progress. He paid the $100 listing fee to get on the Apple Store, uh, and to date, that has been his only startup expense. He doesn't even advertise, and within a day or two, his app was available for download. Lewis' first impression upon seeing his app on the App Store was, shit, this app looks horrible. Uh, but despite that, people downloaded it, and in July of 2012, he made his first income from the app, a whopping $5.60 from an in-app purchase. 
An in-app purchase for anybody not familiar is when an app is free, but additional features cost money. Uh, I have kind of a uh, funny in-app purchase story. I recently got hooked on this piano game called Keys. It's kind of like Guitar Hero, but with piano keys and today's pop music playing in the background or that you play the piano to. Uh, this past weekend, we're hanging out with some friends, smoking a few joints. Uh, we got hooked on this game and we were fighting over my girlfriend's iPad taking turns playing it. Uh, anyhow, this app creator is both incredibly smart and also incredibly mean. After each game, which, you know, keep in mind, you can die or lose right away and the game lasts like six seconds. After each game, you have to sit anywhere, sit through anywhere from a one to three minute video commercial ad, uh, which is incredibly frustrating. Um, so, well, it's a candidate for the subreddit r backslash asshole design. Uh, it's also incredibly clever as you're almost forced to, if you enjoy playing the game, you're almost forced to pay for the app so you don't have to sit through uh, a three minute commercial every time you lose. Uh, anyhow, Lewis app was free, but users could pay for in-app purchases uh, for additional features like storing progress photos of themselves and graphs of their progress. By 2015, Lewis was making enough to quit his day job, over 3,000 uh, pounds a month. It was a lot of hard work getting started, but it definitely paid off. Currently, the app is doing about $6,500 a month consistently. And because this is passive, or I guess a better word, leveraged income, it did take a lot of work learning development as well as rolling out the app. Uh, this app is making money even while Lewis is sleeping and even while Lewis is traveling, which is something he does a lot of these days. Moving forward, his goal is to help over a million people lose weight through his app and to continue to work on and improve the app. Lewis says to date, he hasn't spent any money whatsoever on advertising. It's all been spent on improving the app. And I think this is kind of an interesting point and something to think about when pricing an app or service. While most of us do hate paying monthly fees or monthly subscriptions, there's definitely a benefit to doing so, and that is that the developers continue to improve the app. I can say from personal experience, most Shopify apps that I use that charge an upfront fee and not a recurring fee don't always stay up to date and don't always improve features, whereas apps with recurring monthly fees uh, need to continue to troubleshoot and improve and add additional features or they risk losing subscribers. And since every month their app uh, has to continue to provide value to keep justifying users paying for it, uh, the developers continue to improve it. Well, guys, that is pretty much Lewis's story right here. Uh, but I always like to leave a, a few comments on each side hustle story at the end. Uh, first, well, Lewis didn't get in during the initial Apple Store gold rush. Uh, in some sense, he was late to the game. He found something that wasn't out there that catered to a very specific audience and use case. And that's why he had success. Uh, I noticed a lot of people struggling for ideas on how to provide value. Lewis looked to his own life. He wanted to lose weight. He didn't see any apps on the market that he found helpful or suited what he wanted to do. So he created one himself. Uh, now, one last comment on designing apps as a non-designer and non-developer. Typically, I think this is a horrible idea. Uh, I'm going to go off script for a little bit. I had a buddy who, who tried doing this uh, back in 2017 during kind of the crypto rush. Uh, paid one guy, I think, seven grand who just flaked on him and he never heard from him again. Uh, paid another guy 17 grand who just couldn't finish the project um, and, you know, into this app for twenty three, twenty four thousand dollars The thing never actually even went live. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I traditionally think, you know, trying to build an app or really any kind of technology company uh, with no background, not being a, a programmer coder is a horrible idea. Um, you're going to pay a lot of money for designers. Uh, it's going to be completely hit or miss in terms of whether you find a good developer. Uh, you're probably relatively clueless as to what you should be paying, what the capabilities of an app are. You, like, you just have no idea what you're doing. Uh, it could very easily go sideways. However, for those that want to undertake something like this anyhow, you can always find local developers or better yet, use a site like Upwork, OnlineJobs.ph or Freelancer to hopefully find a decent English speaking person in the Philippines, India, Indonesia or somewhere where people work cheaper than a local developer. Uh, one thing to be aware of or check for or check on or ask about uh, is if the development is going to include just the functionality or also the design of the app as well. Uh, many app developers will build the functionality, but you're on your own for designs or, or essentially screenshots, what the screens are going to look like. Uh, what's a typical app cost to build? Maybe some of you guys are developers or have built an app and can, can kind of comment on this. Uh, now, obviously, this is kind of a vague question and answer, but a quick Google search yields the answer that uh, 
like a professional app that a company would put out or that a, an app development company would put out could cost anywhere from 100000 to $500,000. Uh, a smaller app could easily run ten dollars to $50,000. And something like very, very basic, something that works off the framework of another app could be as cheap as a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I remember a few years ago, I kind of casually looked into building an app. And if I remember correctly, most apps, at least as far as games go, wind up being one of a, a handful of types of apps, either like a running game, like a, a Subway Surfer or a Tomb Runner, uh, a physics game like Cut the String or Angry Birds. Uh, basically, the point being, a lot of apps are literally the same app as other apps, just different characters. So, uh, you know, make a Tomb Runner or a Subway Surfer, but use a unicorn instead of a, uh, a, a skater or an adventurer. Something like this would be fairly cheap. Uh, you can also buy already created established apps on sites like Flippa for as few as a couple hundred bucks if all you're looking to do is just kind of take on a, an app and then add advertising and try to market it or try to grow it in the App Store. Anyhow, guys, I have rambled on long enough. You get the point. If any of you guys have designed apps or are profiting from apps, feel free to drop a comment and tell us about it uh, and educate us, the, the rest of us, a little bit more. Well, guys, that's today's episode of Side Hustle Tuesdays. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button down below for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Side Hustle Tuesdays. Rules for Rebels, signing out. Later, guys.